These are some cool new chargers. Let's check them out. Dave Taylor here and let's talk about power. I know I talk about it a lot because all our devices need it. We need to be charging our devices with some frequency. Now, my MacBook Pro is getting to the end of its battery life. The battery health is not great. I get about two or three hours, which means I'm constantly charging it. Now, Apple has chargers, but they still have that sort of brick, that square thing, and it's big. So a lot of third-party companies have been looking at newer, more modern technologies and saying, we can do better than Apple. And they're right. But it's not just my MacBook. It's my phone, it's my earbuds, it's headphones. There's so much that we need to power nowadays that it's just sort of this endless parade of how do I charge it? Where's a wall plug? You know, do I have a charging battery or power bank? You know, I'm at an event and I'm running out of battery and I need to be able to call someone for a pickup or something. It can get very stressful. It can also get very stressful at trade shows because there you are and you need to take pictures because that's why you're there and your phone's running out of juice. What are you gonna do? So Anchor reached out to me and said, we have some really cool new gear based on our latest gallium nitride technology or GAN and they sent me two devices and they're kind of different but they're kind of the same. So let's start with the easier one. This is the Anchor Prime let me flip that out. The Anchor Prime 100 watt USB-C three port charger. So that's a 100 watt charger and it is significantly smaller than those Apple rec, you know, square chargers. In fact, they say it's 43% smaller than Apple's 96 watt charger. Remember, this is a 100 watt charger. So it has two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. The USB-A port, as is appropriate, has a maximum of 22.5 watts, but those USB-C ports, you can push out a lot of wattage. Now, we should talk math, because the reality is that when you have like a 100 watt charger, you don't get three times 100 watts if you plug three devices in. You take that 100 watts and you divide it by the number of things plugged in, not evenly. So again, if I plug in something on the USB-A and plug something on the USB-C, then that USB-A will pull a maximum of 22.5 watts, and then the USB-C will get what's left over. If you want all 100 watts, you just plug in one thing to USB-C. It's pretty straightforward, right? So this features Active Shield 2.0, which protects you from overheating and overcharging and all of the bad things that can happen with poorly designed chargers. Anchor's the number one third-party charger company in the world. I think they got that figured out. So also comes with the 24-month warranty if you're stressing about that, but you shouldn't be. So three ports on one side, foldable prongs on the other side. So you just plug that into the wall or I happen to have a handy power port here and then you're ready to go. But let me just talk briefly about the other one and then I'm gonna do some tests and we're gonna look and try to understand how this all works and see if it's really giving us the maximum possible wattage. We'll get there. Now, the other device they sent me is even more cool. So let's see, I'll push this button. So you see that little display on the front? This is the Anchor Prime 9600 milliamp hour 65 watt power bank. So it has a battery in it and it has two USB ports on the side and then in the back again it has those folding wall prongs so you could plug it into the wall plug your devices in your devices will charge and this will refill its battery and it will show you its current battery level so I'm at 83 percent right now but you can also plug devices in and get a charge without actually having this plugged into the wall because batteries. <laughs> so it's a 65 watt fast charger or if you use both of them then you're going to get 45 watts on one and 25 or 20 watts on the other and again if you look at this close-up you can see the lower ones the higher power that's why it has that teeny tiny little icon next to it. So 
Power Delivery 3.0 or PD 3.0, PPS, those are both protocols so that your device talks and negotiates with the power source so that it gets the maximum safe wattage. Different devices can handle different amount of wattage. Um, the display on the front is actually a 1.3 inch smart LCD display. And this also has Active Shield, but while this is Active Shield 2.0, this has Active Shield 3.0. So it also protects against overcharging and overheating and everything, but it does it even better. So <laughs> this is the world we live in, right? Where things incrementally update and we never really understand the difference, but suffice to say, both of these are gonna make sure you don't have any bad experiences. So this not only comes with the two USB-C ports, comes with a handy little carrying lanyard, and it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable, but this is a 100 watt rated cable. So that's kind of interesting because this is a 65 watt charger, but if you use it with this one, you can get that full 100 watts. Now, what does that mean? Standard USB-C cables max out at 65 watts, then that's just the way they've been designed. So if you wanna get more than that, a level of power coming through the wire, you need to get a higher powered cable. And they include one, this is a premium product. USB-C to USB-C up to 100 watts. And it has a very nice little soft cloth carrying bag if you want to use that. So, two really cool devices. Let's do some tests and then I'll tell you some about the dimensions and the price. Let's see. So we're going to start with this one, which is the Anchor Prime 100 watt. So I have a PC, I have a Mac, I have an Android, I have an iPhone. I got all sorts of devices. I got a lot of cables too. So let's start with my MacBook Pro. Pro, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on screen recording. Let me just get all this stuff set up. Give me a second. Okay, I have things set up, and what I'm running here is I'm running a program called System Information, which anyone on a Macintosh can find in Applications Utilities. So it's in the Utilities folder, and it's really great because it shows you something that almost no devices tell you, which is how much power is it actually getting. So you can see that sadly, <laughs> my battery has a maximum capacity of 77% and the condition is service recommended. So not great, but I have a nice, short, highly rated cable. So this is rated for 100 watts. And let's see, I'm gonna put it in the lower plug and then we're gonna plug this into my computer and that should get us powered up. And so now this is only one device from the 100 watt charger. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do a refresh here. Let's see, uh, refresh information. And so we'll come down a little bit and there's our charger. So you can see AC charger information connected. Yes, wattage 100. So this is getting 100 watts of power into my MacBook Pro right now. That is pretty sweet. So now with that going on, let's plug in my Pixel phone and we're gonna plug that into the USB-A port. And so this is a Pixel 8a and I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that in and we'll steal some power. So now the phone, it's not a very bright display but it does have a battery icon. So now my phone is charging and that means it's taking away from that 100 watts. So let's refresh this and let's see where we are now. So now you can see it's still powering, it's still charging, it's now at 76 watts. And if I plug in a third thing, and why not, let's do that. In fact, I'll just use the anchor cable and we'll plug in a third device. And what I wanna plug in is I wanna plug in something that's also power hungry. So we're gonna plug in my Lenovo PC. I have to figure out where the port is, but we'll do that. And then we'll see how much power is left for my Mac. So let's see, here's this cable. And normally I'm not quite this disorganized with my charging, but so this now has the light on. So this is charging, that's good. So let's put this underneath and we'll do one more refresh. Let's see, refresh information. 
and we'll go down again and now unsurprisingly it has taken that 75 74 watts and it's divided it across the two devices and apparently the Lenovo is a little more greedy so the Mac is getting 30 watts the Lenovo is charging and let's see my Android phone is also still charging so all three devices are sharing that hundred watts of power in exactly the way i was talking about this is mathematics you actually take the number just divide it up based on all the different devices so if i actually plugged my macbook pro into the usb a it can't give it 100 watts through usba remember i talked about that earlier so we'd still be constrained with how much power it can handle that is really cool now let's have some more fun while we still have my macbook recording let's switch this out and i'm going to just plug this into the power bank now let's see so power bank has whoops um oh, i seem to have gotten into settings that's handy but the power bank has 83 percent so if i plug it into the lower port which is for computers then it now shows that it's still charging, which is great. And on the front, you, I hope you can see, I keep going into settings, it's showing me that it's giving 62 watts. Now let's do that refresh one more time and let's see how much power my computer says it's getting. And it's getting 65 watts. So it's getting the maximum possible power out of the power bank. It's not plugged into the wall. So now imagine that you're between classes and you really need a little more charge for your computer and your computer's greedy on power. This device can do a great job with that, no problem. And as you can see on the display, it shows you how much power it's giving, which is really cool. So we'll do one more thing since I'm just in like hard demo mode. So now let's go back and plug in that other computer, the Lenovo. And so now, again, they're competing for power, and it shows me, well, let's see, that it's now actually negotiating the protocol. So what I've got here is this should be getting 42.9 watts, and then the Lenovo's getting 17.3 watts. So, all right, one more refresh. And again, I really love this program because it shows you this information. Let's see, did I get that to work? Yeah, so here we just have our refresh. And now, sure enough, the Mac is saying I'm getting 45 watts. And here's something really important to know. Pretty much all devices can handle less wattage than their maximum. They'll just charge more slowly. I have charged my MacBook Pro with 22 watts of input power. The trick is just turn it off and close it and just let it stay plugged in. And it's better than nothing, right? It gives you some power. So let's see where we are here. So now let me get all this stuff closed up. So that's where we are. And I think that both these devices are just really fantastic. I mean, I really like having these super flexible devices. Now, of course, other than this one cable from Anchor that comes with this device, you will need to BYOC, bring your own cables. You can get USB-C to USB-C that short. And I also have 10 foot USB-C cables. So there's a wide range. They're super inexpensive if you don't have the cable length that you want, but these are both terrific devices. And by the way, I was powering all those computers. I'm still at 76%. 9,600 milliamp hours is a pretty decent sized battery. That is about 3X the size of my iPhone 15 Pro's battery. So there's a lot of juice there. If you'd go from zero to 100 on your big Mac or your big PC or something, that's probably gonna deplete it, but that's its job, so that's great. Now, I do want to give you some dimensions and, and weight because these are a little bit more hefty than I expected when I pulled them out of their boxes. So this is the Anchor Prime 100 watt three port charger and it is 1.7 inches by 1.5 inches by 2.4 inches and it's 6.5 ounces. So it's probably a little bit lighter than the Apple charger, but it's certainly a whole heck of a lot more condensed and of course it has three ports instead of just one, which means that your friends or even someone you don't even know can say, hey, can I borrow your charger? And if you, you can just say, hey, if you got a cable, plug in. And then this one 
This is the Anchor Prime 9600 milliamp hour power bank. This one's 4.5 inches by 1.6 inches by 1.7 inches, and this is 10.8 ounces. Now, all power banks are heavy. It is the nature of the beast that these require batteries and batteries have weight. But I just really like both of these. I think this is the perfect one for travel or trade shows or really long days at school. And this is just the best one to have in your computer bag because it just gives you that enormous flexibility. And as long as you have a 100 watt um, rated power cable, then you can give maximum wattage to whatever devices you have, which gives you the fastest possible safe charge. So really lots to love here. This is just another set of fantastic products from Anchor. I have so many Anchor chargers in my house and office. It's kind of ridiculous, but you can see why they're really focused on great engineering. So definitely ones to check out. Now, we are going to talk about price, but before we get there, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Click or tap on that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon for notifications. Check out my videos when you get the notifications. And give me a thumbs up if you found this video of value. I certainly hope you did. I had a lot of fun with all this testing and experimenting. So, prices. This, pop this out. This is the Anchor Prime 100 watt USB-C three port charger and it's $84.99 at amazon.com. So 85 bucks basically. And then this is the Anchor Prime 9600 milliamp hour 65 watt two USB-C port power bank and it is $89.99 at amazon.com. So this one's $5 more than this one. They both offer incredible functionality and are super useful. If you want more wattage and don't need battery, this is your choice. If you wanna have it be up to 65 watts as we saw, but you also want the convenience of having it be self-powered if you aren't convenient to a wall outlet, then this is definitely a great choice. That's everything I got. I need to plug everything back in. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.